Hi, Kevin here. Today we're going to bake an old world Italian bread called frisella. Here's what it looks like. So I made all of this and more frisella yesterday. It really looks like a bagel, but it's crispy, crunchy, and it's perfect for topping with sliced cherry tomatoes and olives. You could even top it with canned baked beans. That would be delicious. Anyway, look at this. Super crisp. Absolutely delicious. Frisella is made with nothing more than flour, water, yeast, salt, a little honey, and some olive oil. And the first thing we need is the yeast mixture. All right, so what I have here is one cup, that's 250 ml of warm water. And then I'm going to add two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. You could use instant yeast here. So that's two and a quarter teaspoons. Give that a little whisk. Then I'm going to add one teaspoon of honey. You could add sugar if you like. This is going to give the bread just a tiny hint of sweetness. And then add a quarter cup, that is 50 ml, of extra virgin olive oil. Whisk. And then set this aside for about five minutes or until it turns foamy. Meantime, we're going to measure out the flour. All right, so what I'm doing is weighing out 250 grams of all-purpose flour. That's about two and a quarter cups of the all-purpose flour. And then I'm going to add the same amount, 250 grams of, let me show you the bag, white whole wheat flour. You could use just regular dark whole wheat flour. So that's 250 grams. In other words, we want 500 grams total. There. Take a little out. There we are. Then I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt. Because bread without salt is very bland. And then whisk. Just want to combine the two flours and the salt. And then I'm going to use my stand mixer and a dough hook to mix and knead the bread, but you can absolutely knead this bread entirely by hand. All right. I'm going to start mixing this at low speed. And goes the yeast mixture. Now, I'm filming this video on my cheap camcorder simply because, well, it's a bread recipe and I didn't want to fuss with the, you know, the cell phone and the laptop monitor and all of that, so I hope you don't mind. Just easier this way. I just want to bake bread. Okay. Now, we're going to knead the bread for about seven minutes or until it turns smooth and elastic. And when that happens, we'll come back. Okay, I'm back because I wanted to tell you that if, while you're kneading, if you notice that there are some crumbs of flour that are not being incorporated into the dough, just add a tiny amount of additional water. And I'm going to do that right now. probably isn't even a tablespoon of water. It's probably a teaspoon. 
There we go. So it moistened the dry flour at the bottom of the bowl. So now we can continue kneading. All right, the dough is looking good. Scrape it off the dough hook. Yeah, this is, I use the stand mixer to knead the dough, but it's a really easy dough to knead by hand. I mean, it's not particularly sticky. In fact, it's a fairly dry dough. So now I'm going to knead it just briefly by hand on my marble board here. Sorry for all the shaking. Just trying to adjust the camera. Very nice dough. And by the way, I watched a lot of Frisella recipes on YouTube. All of them were in Italian and I do not speak Italian. But, where did that come from? I was able to uh, figure out how to make Frisella by watching the videos. Of course, they used a different kind of flour. I think it was Durham wheat flour in some videos and semolina flour in other videos. But essentially, you want to use a wholemeal flour. So I combined both all-purpose and a wholemeal flour in the white whole wheat flour. Okay, so now you want to form this into a ball. And then I'm going to place this in a greased bowl. And to grease the bowl, I'm going to use just a speck of extra virgin olive oil. Rub it around. Okay, that was a little more than I needed, but so be it. Put the ball in, smooth side down, and then flip it to grease the other side. And then, Cover the bowl with cling film. And then pop this into a warm, draft-free location until the dough doubles in volume. That's going to take 90 minutes to two hours. And when this is doubled, we'll come back. All right, our frisella dough has definitely doubled in volume. That only took about one hour and 15 minutes. So now, I'm going to gently pour it onto my work surface. And then form it into, oh, a log shape. And then, I'm going to cut this into eight fairly equal pieces. And I'm just using my little plastic pastry scraper here. Yeah, you can make your frisella any size you like. Okay, you could probably cut this, well I'm sure you could cut this into 10 pieces. All right, and of course all of my pieces are not perfectly uniform, but that's fine. So, now we're going to form each piece into a roll, or rather a ball. So what you do is tuck the ends under like this, and then using the palm of your hand, roll the ball on the work surface to create a perfect sphere. I'll do one more for you. Yeah, we used the same technique when we made the Japanese milk bread rolls and when we made the fluffy dinner rolls. This is a technique that every baker should know. Very easy to do. Okay, I'll finish forming these into balls and then I'll come back. And I just realized I didn't even cut mine into eight pieces. I cut it into six pieces. So here's the eight. All right, I'm going to form these into balls. And then 
We will be back. Okay, the last one. Again, form this into a ball. Just tuck the ends under. So you're creating surface tension. So you want the top to be smooth. There we are. So now, I'm going to form each one of these balls into a rope. So you start rolling it from the center. And as it elongates, start using two hands. We're going to turn this into a rope that is, oh, anywhere from six to 10 inches long. It's actually fun to do. Once you get the hang of making Frizzell, you want to make them all the time. Let's see how this is. Yep, this looks good. So now join the ends together like so and then pinch to seal and then gently flatten the little donut and place it on a parchment lined baking sheet. And you will need two baking sheets for this recipe. Okay, I'm going to finish forming my frisada and when they're all done I'll come back. Sure, I'll finish this one for you. You can always fast forward. Here we go. Pinch the ends. Flatten. Pop it on the baking sheet. Okay, last one here. So I put five of the little breads on one baking sheet and three on the other. So now you want to cover these with cling film or a damp towel. Here's one. these out a little better. And two. And then put these in a warm location and let them rise until pretty much doubled in volume. That's going to take like one hour. Meanwhile, here, let me talk with you. Yeah, meanwhile, too close. Preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 200 degrees Celsius. All right, we'll come back. All right, here are the breads, all doubled in volume. So now, Remove the cling film or the towel, whatever you use. And then pop these in the oven for 15 minutes. I'm going to put one on the center rack and the other sheet on the upper third rack. And again, just 15 minutes. We don't want these to color at all. We just want them to set. And here they are, after 15 minutes in the oven. Now, let these cool, oh, for 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'll show you the next step. All right, frizzella are twice baked breads. So after they've cooled a little, uh, cooled enough that you can handle them, what you want to do is cut them horizontally in half. I use a serrated knife for this job. And I've already split all of these other breads. And you may find that you need to add a third baking sheet. 
in order to accommodate all of the breads. So that these go back into the oven until they brown on top and on the bottom and they turn crisp. So that's going to be 25 to 30 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And here are my 16 frisella. As you can see, they're brown on the bottom. They are brown on the top. They are very crisp. Now I'm going to let these cool for a bit. And then I'm going to take at least one and use it for dinner tonight. So what I have here are some heirloom cherry tomatoes from my local farm store. And I've cut them in to pieces. And then I have some Kalamati, Kalamata olives that I'm going to add to the tomatoes. And some oregano. And some fresh basil from my garden. Okay, I'm going to fix one of these and then I'll show you what it looks like on the plate. And by the way, these are so dry now that you can store them for a really long time at room temperature. Just put them in a Ziploc bag or an airtight tub and they will keep for a very long time. Well, I suppose you can watch me assemble this Zed. So first some olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. And then some of the tomatoes. By the way, this bread will really soak up the olive oil and any juice from the tomatoes. I'm going to put lots of them on here. Here we go. One more. And then some of the Kalamata olives. These olives were sliced. Or I should say they were already sliced in the bottle. And then, what do you want? Oh, some grated Parmesan. That's only because I don't have any mozzarella on hand. And then, I think another little drizzle of the olive oil. And then, some of this fresh, fragrant basil. And I'm just going to tear up the leaf. Have a look. Oh, I really wish you guys could join me. Here the crunch. This is fabulous. This is molto delizioso. Another bite. That's how good it is. I'm going to have two bites on camera. Mm. Hang on. Well, I hope you will try this frisella someday. It's really easy to make. It's really fun to make. And I will post the recipe in the description below. I hope you will give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe and tap the little bell icon to receive notifications. And I'm sorry, this was just a camcorder video, but again, I wanted to keep things simple today. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.